Welcome to Ham Nation, episode 530 for September 28th, 2022. And hello everybody, I am Josh, KI6NAZ. I've got a bit of a sore throat, so uh, I just want to say big show. Uh, we're going to go straight to the host here and get things started, but uh, thanks for coming on out here to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Hosts, well, we got Valerie up there. Boy, it's good to see you all again. Uh, I'm going to start right with Dawn with the with the how to do's. Uh, Dawn, how's it going? I'm doing well, but um, as as the one here who lives in the hurricane belt, uh, our uh, our thoughts and prayers are going out to our folks in uh, Florida. It made uh, landfall right around Cape Coral earlier this afternoon, and I, we may have a little bit of video actually from. Uh, from Joe Eisenberg's brother who lives in Cape Coral. When he sent me that video earlier right at landfall, I looked at the, uh, at the weather on my iPhone and it showed the winds in Cape Coral at 98 miles an hour. And they had peak winds at 130, 135, I believe. So I'm actually looking at the Tampa radar right now on my iPhone. And it's, uh, it's a bit nasty out there. So uh, those of you... Uh, over in Florida or have family and friends down there, uh, we're, we're all praying for you. So uh, that's kind of all I got right now for that. We're going to have uh, Amateur Radio Newsline in the news and also a little solar update from Dr. T coming up, Josh. All right. Thank you for that. And I think it was last episode, I got a, a comment from a gentleman that said, shame on you, Josh, for not going to the ladies first, because I usually have Amanda wrap it up as she likes to kick it off to the next person, because I think that's the way to do it, is Amanda's running the show out here, to be honest. But with that said, for today, let's go to Valerie, and then we'll go to Amanda. So, Valerie, it's good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. How are you? I'm doing great. My Florida house is doing good. Originally, we were in the zone, but we seem to skirt through, but not so good for a lot of my ham friends down there. I have two in particular, K9GS and K9EL down in, uh, have homes down in Naples and uh, Punta Gorda, and uh, it doesn't look so good. And it's heading right now for a couple of my other friends in Orlando and the Space Coast. So I pray everybody stays safe and gets through this thing, and I'm I'm rooting for y'all. Mm-hmm. Amanda, how oh, are you this week? I just wait. Oh, I just want to say one more thing, please. You're gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna give you a little glimpse of what's coming up. Okay, I got something special. Amateur radio may make the big screen, but you gotta stick around to find out more. All right, Amanda, how are you? <laughs> well, I'm very intrigued now, Val. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad your home's okay. Uh, let's see. First, uh, Solidarity. I wore my incident management team shirt tonight just so I know because there's tons of hams out there doing some work right now that's going to be amazing. And we're going to hear a lot of stories about it later on. And we're barely getting shots from uh, Hurricane in right now. So stay tuned. I'm sure there's going to be some really fantastic um, saves and saves the day kind of stories that include amateur radio. Other than that, everybody... We have such a full show. I didn't bring anything to the table. So I'm just here to watch you guys in the chat room. So uh, send us your questions. And at the end of each segment, I'll be uh, I'll be passing them on to uh, the segment hosts. Um, other than that, uh, Josh, over to you. Okay. Well, let's go to Joe. It's good to see Joe again. How are you doing, Joe? Well, I'm doing better. Uh, hopefully my voice is uh, cleared up just a bit. Uh, kind of going through a bout of the, the bug going around. So... Uh, Hopefully we'll be uh, all through with it in time to visit the Ham Fest in Wyoming next week. I'm looking forward to going out west. And uh, I'm going to be showing a, a tool that is really helpful in working with surface mount devices. It won't break the bank. Something that anybody can afford and you'd be surprised how inexpensive it really is. And I'll be putting a, a link to it in the uh, chat room. And I think I've got one picture uh, from Cape Coral that I'll show towards the end as well. Excellent. And Gordo, we're off to you to wrap things up around the horn. Also, you're the next segment. So why don't you just tell us what you're up to and then take it away. All right. Well, thanks so much. Ham radio operators, uh, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is critical for ham radio operators to take some health and welfare traffic out of the Florida area. That means people will ask 
can you make a phone call to a loved one and let them know that I'm okay? Take that traffic. This is what ham radio is all about because they're out of power and they may not have much more than a neighbor coming up to a ham saying, can you pass some traffic? When you make that phone call, always preface it with, I have good news from a ham radio operator in Florida. That way the person you're calling doesn't uh, get all choked up with thinking, "Uh uh-oh. So uh, handle that this weekend. There'll be plenty of it out there. Now, tonight we've got uh, Bob and Stephen. uh, Stephen, WM6X, Bob, K3DIO. They are going to be talking about ham radio remote testing. So for those in Florida who uh, go to normally a clubhouse to offer exams, and it floated away. Uh, boy, we're sorry for all of you down there during this terrific uh, hurricane. Um, or any part in the USA, even overseas, if you need to take a test, the volunteer examiners through the W5YI group have you covered. Stephen, I'll let you go ahead and roll the roll. Well, Gordo, thanks very much, and good evening to everybody on tonight's panel. Um, I am Stephen. I'm with the Spout Springs Repeater Association up here in the beautiful Pacific Northwest, and I'm awfully proud and privileged to represent W5YI testing, remote testing. Uh, W5YI embraces the use of exam tools. Uh, Some of us are quite familiar with that, and it's just been a blessing uh, to ham radio and getting people licensed. I'll briefly share my screen as I share a little bit of a presentation with the rest of you here. Uh, so we'll we'll roll that. Hopefully we're we're seeing that okay on the screen. We are. Yep. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Well, um, exam tools. More than half of the VECs now use exam tools. It's a generous product of Richard Bateman. Um, KD7BBC, who also produces the signal stick antennas we love. It couples nicely with ham study, where our potential applicants study for their respective exams, then simply find a test session that's convenient for them as well. Um, Richard, though it's signal stuff, uh, is the guy that brings this all to us. These two sites are companions and complement each other beautifully. Exam Tools is responsible, obviously, for increasing the number of licensed amateurs. While its convenience of nearly instant amateur radio exams is obvious, without the need for travel or even shoes and socks, really. Um, So, you know, nowadays we are definitely a a society of instant gratification. And when we want it, we want it now. Uh, There's little sense that a prospective ham who's ready to test must wait weeks or even months for a test session. We think it's a little bit unfair and we want to seize their interest right now, getting folks on the air and radio active even sooner. I have the privileges of uh, overseeing a VE team of nearly 83 volunteer examiners from across the country, 24 states in fact, and we've tested already just shy of 900 applicants. Wow in less than two years, all without printing a single piece of paper, Gordo. Uh, Our (laughs) momentum is building. um, Well, the process is incredibly simple and refreshing. Our applicants register and then simply receive an email. This is actually tonight's email. We're going to be testing six applicants tonight in less than an hour. This is actually the email that they all just received a moment ago with their invitation to join our session. Um, once they submit their fees, uh, we get them into the session. We do a little meet and greet, and VEs also jump on the screen if it's convenient for them as well. Uh, we often have a plethora of VEs, volunteers, sincere volunteers who dedicate a lot of time. Why do we have so many VEs? Well, frankly, sometimes it might be just to get out of some honeydews and those weekend chores. But quite frankly, it's because of selfishness. We get a little bit giddy out of this testing process. Here's why. Even uh, seeing applicants pass their exams, we're we're reminded ourselves of when we passed our respective exams and we get to 
somehow revisit that same feeling once again. And uh, when our applicants are successful in their exams, it's, it's quite a rush of excitement. Uh, when an applicant comes into the room, we do a meet and greet. We prepare them for any, um, with any questions that they might have, and we get their computers ready for screen sharing. Uh, we often know, too, that we are sometimes the first human contact they've ever had in ham radio. Uh, so we, uh, we get together, we solve all of their questions and put all of their nerves at ease. Um, you know, we also do room scans. Uh, this is Danielle who tested with us back in June. Uh, Danielle's give us, giving us a brief tour of her testing environment. And you know what? All we're worried about is making sure that there's no testing aids nearby and that you're able to complete your exam with no outside assistance. You know, we don't care if you're testing in the bathroom, in the kitchen, or your kids' room. <laughs> your room scan is brief. We're very mindful of your privacy as well. Danielle, right here, just actually moments later, obtained her technician amateur radio privileges. Okay, so encouragingly, uh, folks have been caught gaming the system a little bit. Peter, do you do the honors? And they are caught. It be my pleasure. Hopefully we're hearing the audio on this. This is Evan. Here we go. All yes. right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Who just passed Very his good. amateur extra Ooh. exam with us last Welcome Saturday evening. Awesome. Uh, Evan is also a volunteer that. examiner out of Walla Walla, Washington, and we're pleased to have him in the volunteer examining system. Um, well, when these applicants join a breakout room, simple clear instructions are given by their exam team. Are you crossing and, your fingers? Uh, this is Doris. Doris tested with us, too. Congratulations. Team. Great job. <laughs> Become a retread. Well done. Hot Welcome. job. <laughs> Listen to her. Hot job. Welcome. I think Doris was pleased. Uh, her, her biggest expression was hot dog, and that's all right with us, too. And, and it's safe for air, too. Anyway, the FCC does act and will deny upgrades for people who have attempted to game the system. And uh, encouragingly, oh, here's some feedback. This is probably the best experience I've had in my life as far as taking an exam. The people were friendly. They went through every step that needed to be done. Um, I had absolutely no questions when I went in there. And, and the, exam, the exam process was relatively easy. Thank you very much. Sure. No, just thanks again to uh, all the volunteers. It's a smooth and, and quick process. Really appreciate it and their time. So, Okay, thanks. great. You know, when people pass their test, some jump out of their chairs, some pump their fist in the air, some, some curse in disbelief. Uh, some even actually become emotional. Okay, I just passed my amateur extra, extra exam uh, using the WM7X uh, testing system. And uh, the and um, the testing was easy and uh, and non-threatening, uh, <laughs> and everything went well. So thank you very much. Congratulations, Phil. Well, that gentleman just tested for his amateur extra with us very recently and obtained his upgrade as well. We then warmly invite our applicants to continue their studies, returning to our test team for their very next upgrade as well. Um, you know, we have new volunteer examiners joining our team all the time. In fact, Tom and Gloria from Arizona are waiting for their credentials to join our exam team as well in the very near future. In fact, this evening in less than one hour, our team tests again, six applicants. Uh, we're looking forward to meeting Herbie and Andrew from New York. Felix, Allison, and Richard all are from California, and Sebastian is down in Texas. Uh, I will see you in, at about the top of the hour anyway. Um, we also accept walk-ins. That's kind of our specialty as well. Oh, that is, anyway. that is great, Stephen. Stephen, where do they where go, do they to, go to learn about? about? A very good question, Gordo. Uh, there's a, a website we'd like to direct people to. Um, it is hamstudy.org. Hamstudy.org. From there, they'll be able to locate a remote or in-person test session convenient for them and simply register at that site. There'll be a slide coming up on that in just a moment. You know, we've tested people, Gordo, from all the states. Uh, I think we're only lacking two of them now. Even applicants from London, Paris, in South Africa, including Philip, 
who works at the McMurdo Scientific Research Station on the ice shelf in Antarctica. He tested with us. Feedback has been tremendous on the remote testing program, and we just can't be more proud of what we've done. Now, I need to share this with you for just a second. Um, I met Gordo. I had used Gordo's books years ago when I obtained my initial amateur radio license back in the early 90s. Um, I kind of got to know Gordo by reading his books. I, was, I had the thrill of meeting Gordo uh, in the Arizona desert a couple of years ago at the Quartz Fest rally. Gordo actually was the person who sponsored me to become a volunteer examiner. Uh, little did he, or I know, the fire that he lit in me that day and the success that our team has had as a result of his encouragement. And now to invite Gordon to actually serve as a volunteer examiner on the team that I oversee. What a treat. And I'll tell you, it will always be one of my greatest ham radio memories. So Gordo, thanks for the opportunity and thanks for uh, bringing ham radio into my life. Well, (laughs) you've got it. And (laughs) you know, we we all as examiners thank instructors for their great work in teaching ham radio. And Bob, by the way, Bob, if you'll go ahead and unmute, Bob has created some wonderful uh, ham radio PowerPoints for technician and Jim, and uh, we'll work on extra next year. So, Bob, uh, if you'll narrate uh, what we're looking at here. Go ahead, Bob. Okay, this is a slide that has all the connections you can make for grounds. You notice you got nice, thick copper wire, or the, the braid there. On the bottom, you don't want it crimped and things like that. And some of those things are in the questions for the tech, too. So now this slide right here is the first slide you get when you get to the answers. These PowerPoints are set up with the first group is set up for the info. And then the second session is the que- the answers. And that's what the call signs are indicating. This is the first slide uh, that, that has come in from a previous uh, click of a mouse. Uh, we didn't see it come in for, with the animation, but normally where it says absorption is the effect, that would come in from the left, and then there's a delay when that graphic would come in from the right. Same thing with the simplex would come in from the left, the other one would come in from the bottom. These two, here, these two here, when this one actually cycles through, it would come up from the bottom, and when it comes up from the bottom, let, let you know that's the last item that you need on that slide. Now these three right here are again Aurora Borealis stuff, and again, the last graphic that will come up is telling you, next slide, go. Now, this is, again, a nice slide. It, again, will show you the effects of as soon as the atmosphere comes in, then there's a delay for that graphic on the, on the right. The next one comes in all by itself, and then the next one comes in, and then its graphic comes up. Now, this is the chapter title slide, weak single propagation. I can't see on the bottom of mine here, but from the bottom up, on the very bottom, the dates of July uh, uh, 1st of this year to June 30th of 2026 20, is what's right. going to show you. And again, that's an upward movement. This again is going to be the same thing. In from the left, the graphic would come in from the right. In from the left of the graphic, those graphics would come in from the right, and one of them will come up from the bottom, and now you know the next slide comes up. Now, notice behind each one of these slides, at the tail end, there's a teeny little T1 AO5 or something else like that. That lets you know where it was in the question pool. And if you need to go to Gordon's book, go to the tail end and find out where you go to what page to read. Well, Bob, that is terrific. And folks, these are available for registered ham instructors at www.haminstructor.com. www hamminstructor, all run com, absolutely free. And Bob, we salute you for pulling all these together. Now, in his work to pull these together, uh, we're going to be presenting uh, this whole technique of these live action uh, PowerPoint slides up at Pacificon. So let's take a quick look, Bob and uh, Stephen. And again, thanks to Alan WB5QNG that works with the W5YI group for getting our haminstructor.com site up. So let's go to Pacificon in two weeks from now. Uh, Pacificon and uh, oh, there we go. 
the Pacific Con Ham Radio Convention uh, has been going on for just many, many years. It's in San Ramon at the Marriott Hotel. And uh, Pacific Con on uh, bright and early Saturday morning will have a two-hour uh, ham radio instructor's course. But, of course, every great ham radio convention has to have a swap meet. And whether it's rain or shine, that swap meet outside is a goodie on, uh, I believe, Sunday morning. But bright and early on Friday, all day is the antenna seminar. As you can see, it's packed. Friday afternoon, that's when the exhibits open. And the exhibitors, ICOM, Illicraft, Flex, BridgeCom, Yezu, NCG, HRO, Impulse, ARRL, BioNO, Batteries Plus, they will all be there, plus a lot more at Pacificon. And Pacificon really knows that we need to open up ham radio more for kids to get them licensed. And again, this weekend, our opportunity as ham operators to help out with health and welfare traffic, 20 meters around 14300, avoid 325, that's the uh, National Hurricane Center, but take some health and welfare traffic and pass a message to a loved one that uh, their friends are okay. So this is Ham Radio at its best, and uh, Stephen WM6X, thank you for uh, your work with uh, uh, the great uh, remote testing, and soon uh, you'll be uh, way up there as the, in fact, you probably are the greatest remote tester in the country for numbers. Bob K3DIO, thanks to you for your great PowerPoint, and again, you can see his PowerPoints and download them yourself at www. Ready? Here we go. Haminstructor.com. Uh, register, do a simple password, and you're in, and you can do that plus the instructor's guide. So we sure hope to see you on the air uh, as an instructor in a couple weeks up at San Ramon. Now, let's take a look and uh, see what maybe ICOM has to offer us that oh, will be no. eyeballing up in uh, San Ramon at Pacificon. I think we have a question. A couple of questions. We do have some questions, Gordo. Don't forget okay. that. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, you're fine. So you answered the first question. You, you gave us the haminstructor.com for where they could find those uh uh, slides ready to download so that answers somebody's question the next one is uh what two states have you not done testing for uh steven what two um we're waiting on hawaii and connecticut connecticut ah, that's league yeah. territory so, <laughs> so where's our hawaiians where where you at folks <laughs> we'd love to get you on the list <laughs> Okay, I have I have another um, open ended question. This is and this is for me personally. Um, so a lot of people when they're VEs and such, they get awards for hosting so many VE sessions, and they get recognition. So with this now online testing, is there kind of a new recognition and saying here's our honor roll for amount of VE sessions and what you've been doing? Um, is that taking place yet? I don't know who wants to pick Actually, that answer up. Uh, okay. Yeah, it is, Amanda. Uh, W5YI has provided us with a database uh, courtesy of Michael down in Texas, WT9V. Hello, Michael. Good work on that, too, where we can track our progress uh, in comparison with all time or just versus the last three years. So we can see how our progress compares with that of our peers out there as well. Fantastic. So uh, anyone that's interested, I'm sure you can Google that. And um, Stephen, the, the next thing, and I hope I don't make you blush on this, but man, people love the, your presentation style and they love your broadcaster voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's oh, what our okay. chat well, room I... is saying. <laughs> oh, cool. Well, thank you. I'm flattered. Uh, what do they say? I had a, I had a face for radio. <laughs> so anyway, that's why we got into ham radio. But thank you very much for the compliments, friends. Of course, and thank you for oh. so much for being here tonight. Uh, Jack, I have. Did I there's one question? more question oh. from Jack Stex. It sounds like Jack oh, Stex. Okay. I, I don't know if he dropped it, but go ahead. And I think Don is next after. Go that. ahead. Well, go Don. Well. Go Don. Yep. Okay, so Stephen, another broadcaster here. Nice to uh, nice to see another another mic junkie here. Um, those of us who are VEs and might want to get involved in joining the team, how do we do that? Great question. 
That is a good question, and we're, we happen to be taking applications. So uh, although we have jobs of VEs right now, it is so rewarding because not having to start your vehicle to go to a test session right. is, is so convenient. So uh, you can reach out to me directly. I'm good on QRZ under my call sign, WM7X, right. and reach out to me and I'll direct you to the right folks. And whether you'd like to join my team or even somebody else's, there's many, many across the country that uh, you might even see me in other teams' sessions as well. Yes. There's a lot of cross-pollinations uh, where you, we contribute to a lot of different teams around the country. I will certainly do that, Stephen. I have um, I, I I haven't done a VE session in well since before Katrina, uh, not Katrina before a COVID. God, one <laughs> one's just about as bad as the other. I got this damn hurricane on my head. But anyway, um, yeah. So I haven't done a, a, a VE session since COVID started, and quite frankly, I'm a little jonesing for it. So this looks like a really good thing to do, and this this is the wave of the future. And so I'm ready to. And um, I'm happy to say that Bob, Bob wave at everybody, uh, he does such a great job with his PowerPoints, not yeah. just words, but you're seeing all sorts of uh, components and so on for real. So, Bob, thanks for all you do. And Gary and Debbie Johnson up at PacificCon in two weeks will be showing off your hard work on PowerPoints, free for all those that register at Hammondstructor.com. Okay, one, 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 one more quick question. Oh. Uh, how, lo how long does it take to become a VE? And then we're gonna we're gonna have to move on. Okay, absolutely. Through W5YI, some applications can be done within a week. Typically, it'll take uh, three weeks or so, and there's no written book test like some VECs require. Uh, but we do like to vet some of the folks that are onboarding with our team to make sure that they're good examples of amateur radio in their respective areas as well. Very good. And that, that makes sense. Okay, gentlemen, thank you so much for being here this evening. Steven, stuff, guys. Thanks. Bob, Gordo, thanks for bringing these two on. You're amazing as always. And uh, okay, let's uh, hear from ICOM. Keep your competitive contesting edge with ICOM. ICOM's high-powered base stations cut through pileups, letting you work the bands and record those contacts. Contest from the comfort of your home or remotely with the RSBA1 app. Heard it, worked it, logged it. The IC7300 is a high-performance, innovative HF transceiver with a compact design that will far exceed your expectations. This innovative HF transceiver digitizes RF before various receiver stages, reducing inherent noise in different IF stages. The IC7300 changed the way entry-level HF is designed. RF direct sampling, 15 discrete bandpass filters, large 4.3 inch color touchscreen, real time spectrum scope, and SD memory card slot. The real HF fun starts here. Create your own band opening with the IC9700. This transceiver brings direct sampling to the UHF VHF weak signal world. This all mode transceiver is loaded with innovative features that are sure to keep you busy. Faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal. 4.3 inch color touchscreen TFT LCD, real time high speed spectrum scope, and waterfall display. Smooth satellite operation with 99 satellite channels, dual watch operation, and full duplex operation in satellite mode. ICOM's IC7610 is the SDR every ham wants. This high performance SDR can pick out faint signals in the presence of stronger adjacent signals. The ICOM 7610 is a direct sampling software-defined radio that has changed the world's definition of an SDR transceiver. RF direct sampling system, 110 RMDR, independent dual receiver, dual digicell. ICOM's IC7851 gives you a new window into the RF world and is HF excellence unparalleled with faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal. It's truly the pinnacle of HF perfection. Dual receivers, digital IF filters, memory keyer, digital voice recorder, high resolution spectrum waterfall display, enhanced PC connectivity, and SD memory card slot. Learn more about all these great ICOM radios at icomamerica.com amateur. 
And thanks again, ICOM, for sponsoring Ham Nation. We really do appreciate it. Every time we go live, everybody watching, if you click that little enter now on ICOM America for icomamerica.com forward slash ham nation link is in the description you enter to win their three swag pack prize giveaways for that episode at the end of the month they pick somebody to win a radio and every month that revolves that's the process we do so there's always a radio giveaway at the end of the month october is going to be a ic 2730a now, my point of contact uh, for the for the giveaways that I work with Icom, he is on vacation right now. So I have the winners to repeat from last week and we'll sort it all out or the last episode. We'll sort it all out the next time uh, we go live. Anthony M, K6YW, Colin L, KN6UPJ, Corey F, A, F7, C, F. So make sure you take the link in the description or go to that website, icomamerica.com forward slash ham nation and get in on that prize giveaway. And a big thank you again again to icom for supporting ham nation i will make a note while i got the time here i did put up a poll and i asked the people watching the chat and of the hundred or so people that clicked yes or no to did you get your license online did you test online we had close to 25 percent of the population that took it say yes they did and i think that's oh, wow. fantastic considering how this has really just been something that's happened in the last couple of years yeah kind of since covid that's a big number guys so hey i think you guys are really having an impact all the ve's that are doing online testing and obviously everything that um that uh, what am, i just went crazy i'm thinking that's signal huge. stuff signal stuff but hamstudy.org and richard over there uh making that happen good work guys uh, on the tools and everything so just i i love it i think it's perfect it's it needed to happen and kudos to all you for doing it <clears throat> well i have the pleasure of throwing it over to valerie so please valerie take it away yeah, well, you know, I wanted to say something. I didn't take get my license online, but I happen to be at, working at my local ham radio club. You know, I volunteered for my local ham radio club, and I was the chauffeur for Gordo. And that day, he came to our AES Superfest in Milwaukee, and I took my extra class, and I passed it, and so Gordo signed my thing. So um, I do have that little claim to fame. And Gordo, I don't know how if you realize it, how many, many people you probably helped in this hobby. I can't, I can't even imagine the number, but you did help me and uh, get me to progress to the extra because I, I used your CDs <laughs> in my car I'm religiously so proud for you. months so I could pass my extra, but, um, and thank you. <laughs> great work. Great work, Valerie. Yeah, I'm well, you too, you. you too. <laughs> and, uh, I don't know where I'd be without this hobby. So thank you. But tonight I got a really fun guest because, um, it's a kind of a cool thing. I'm going to bring on, uh, my guest, Alan. I'm going to, I, you know, I didn't even work this out with him. Betayevsky. Did I say it right? Yep. yep. All right. Um, Echo Delta 3 Tango, that's his contest call. He's really Echo Alpha 3 HSO, Hotel Sierra Oscar, but everybody out there who contests knows him as Echo, Echo Delta 3 Tango. That's your contest call, right? Yep. All right. So Alan has got a really cool project he's working on. He is working on making a documentary, basically, on amateur radio, right? Yep. So um, first off, I mean – before we get into what's all in it and what's it all about and things like that, but what what prompted you to do this? Well, I, I've been a, an advertising commercials director for 27 years. I started very young, and a film project was in the bucket list for long. Uh, and guess what? I'm a third generation ham. I started in Oscar Alpha, where where I'm originally from in Peru. And so ham radio and movie, so I decided to make uh, the first film project, a uh, ham radio documentary, since there's not uh, a feature film uh, uh, length uh, movie about ham radio. So it's been a six year and a half project so far. I've been in four continents already shooting like a headless chicken because I just went out with my camera, <laughs> without my crew, without a plan, without a script. And uh, I'm about to finish it. Uh, most likely will be uh, released this March or April. This wow. Coming and I came back to I came back to Whiskey Nine uh, to interview some friends that I met uh, before, and and I didn't have uh, on the can. So I'm here at Craig's waiting for him to arrive. I just bombed his station without him uh, inside, and then I'm going <laughs> to carry a So Did you pick uh, the lock. 
No, he left it open. He knows. Uh, <laughs> well, hopefully you operated like uh, 20 minutes from his house because it's on wow. this big farm. So, yeah, it's a house just for contesters with bunk beds and, you know, it's set up for contesting and everything. So, cool. I'm, I'm, I'm dying to inaugurate my uh, U.S. call that actually I got uh, online during the lockdown with that project, with hamstudy.org. Uh, two years ago, and it hasn't been used in the States yet. So I'm eager to sit somewhere back and start operating tonight. <laughs> well, I know. So kind of tell what, what's up, what are you going to, um, what aspects of the hobby are you going to uh, showcase in this movie? I know you went, I remember Jerry was going to go to Pitcairn and he gave up his seat and he said, Hey, put Alan in my seat. Cause he needs to go on a de expedition for this documentary. So I know you did that. Right, so why don't you tell us about going to Pitcairn? Of course. Well, I, I have three the expeditions in the movie, a very small weekend outing uh, with some Israeli friends. I started the project in Israel, going to interview Forex 60T, Amir, my good buddy, and kind of uh, pile up Elmer. Uh, and from then, I wanted something bigger, and uh, the opportunity popped up uh, with... Uh, through Jerry, and luckily uh, through a thing with his knee, and I just grabbed it and uh, went to Pitcairn, and it was like uh, playing in the big league uh, um, without deserving it. <laughs> so I learned a lot, made many good friends, and the third the expedition is the one I did with some uh, LA friends. We went to a deserted island uh, in the Svalbard archipelago uh, last summer. That was J Whiskey Zero Whiskey. So those are the three the expeditions in the movie. Uh, contesting, of course, will be covered here. That's what we are here at Craig's. Um, I have a lot of things. I can't uh, disclose much because I'm right now cutting. My editor is waiting uh, in Barcelona for more material that I'm going to bring back on the 4th. And uh, that's about it. It's kind of... Um, uh, my father was a ham. Uh, my great dad uh, was a ham too, so... It's kind of like a personal trip to re-encounter those silent keys uh, in my family and uh, have the opportunity to explain ham radio for the non-hams. This is a movie for non-hams because we can sit and watch antennas and radios for hours, but uh, people couldn't care less. So I'm really trying uh, to appeal to the non-hams. My objective is uh, uh, to get some laugh from the non-hams. If they understand us a little bit, and uh, we managed to pull more people to the hobby. Mission accomplished. Wow. So no one will need an English to ham radio dictionary <laughs> when they watch this book. Movie, I, right? I have something thought for that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I know you're doing, you're coming here to talk about like us for the public, you know, when I went to Puerto Rico and Jerry with Lithuania. So that aspect too. Um, so yeah, it sounds very interesting. How long do you think the, 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 documentary is going to be how hour hour and a half or what do that, you that, that that that's a stress that uh, takes out my sleep so my editor told me as long as we are above seven minutes you have network slots so between 70 and maybe 90 100 minutes i don't know okay. yet i'm i'm just putting together the skeleton i have a ton of material uh, from ea8 from ea3 from ea1 uh, from the states from israel from uh, oh, wow. Lima. Uh, so, uh, I'm still, I'm right in the top of the creative process, trying to give it shape and, and I had some holes there, uh, the public service, that's what I'm here, the contesting, that's what I'm right here. Yeah. And, um, and you know, I, I was with, uh, with Glenn, Whiskey Zero Golf Juliet for the multifaceted ham, you know, it's like a box of surprises. So I have some very powerful characters and, and it's been a great experience because I'm one of you guys. So everyone opened their houses and their hearts and spilled it out. And I think it's going to end up well. I hope. Great. Now, do you, got, do you have a working title or anything like that yet? Yeah, the working title uh, that I'm going to change for sure. Uh, it's a uh, Hello Perfect Stranger. Um, my, my second uh, K, K Land Ham that I worked in 2013 when I got my Spanish license, old timer, uh, he started the queue saying, uh, how are you doing there? Uh, Hello, perfect stranger. How are you doing there? And I said, <laughs> hey, this is the perfect, you know, we That's speak great. strangers yeah. and we go places. Great. That's a possibility. And the other one I can't disclose would 
might okay. be the final one, <laughs> but I will change 10 times the title until I have it ready. So for now, it's Hello, Perfect Stranger. That's a working title. And, and I'm going to take some liberties with what I think may be a question in the chat room. Do you take bribes if they want to be in your movie? Uh, we, can, we, can, we can talk in private. <laughs> okay. Now, I know you have some of the crew with there. You want to put them on here or is it just, just you? Uh, I, have have my camera, I have my camera. Uh, he's a, a war correspondent. He's been in Afghanistan in all the craziest places in the world attached to U.S. troops. Let me bring him. One second. Yeah, because he's yeah. like a war correspondent or something, I think wow. you would mentioned. Yeah, Funny. I think he said this guy was a war correspondent. And um, yeah. Now, now's I a mean, good time that while he's gone, we can talk about the really I'm cool show, operating show position there quickly. on the island, it this, looks like. This is Sergio. I know, right? <laughs> ah, my hi. camera. Hey, oh, hi. there he is. And what, what's his name? Sergio. Sergio Cadena. Sergio. A, okay. Sergio. He's, uh, I, I for, have another good accent heading my way I, <laughs> women love men with a good accent so. <laughs> yes, we do. yeah these guys are hot coming here like friday so we're looking forward to that he's so, for he's a, you guys a, are enjoying a, uh, the u.s and everybody's treating you well oh we've been treated uh, so far incredible we're really tired we are jet lagged we drove from Chicago to Iowa and back today. We just arrived here to K9CT. Oh, wow. Uh, but I'm really happy. A lot, a lot of uh, material, very good material for the fleet. Yeah. Well, I'm going to send it to Amanda because I bet she's got some questions. I do. Uh, so, Alan, first you said you're going to be stealing uh, the ham shack tonight and you're going to be operating. So uh, what band and what mode so we can come find you and work you and say hello? I don't know. There's big antennas for all the fans. <laughs> Tax. I, I need to decide. I need to wait for Craig. Uh, by the way, my US call is Alpha Lima 8 Alpha. That's the one I'm going to be using here. Can you repeat uh, that? I didn't catch Alpha, it. Alpha Lima 8 Alpha. A-L-8-A. -A. Uh, it was a vanity call that I received from the EFCC without requesting it. It's the initials of my name. Alan yes. Batievsky. And that's the license I got right away. So I didn't have to... To look for it so that's fantastic okay a couple more questions so let's hear about your home contest station oh okay um, I we, we'd love the, to hear your setup i live in the middle of the city right in the middle of the city on a eight uh, story condo building on top of a small hill in barcelona right in the middle downtown barcelona wow. and on top i have a 15 meter tower with a two element cubical quad a five-band uh, cubical quad, that's for 20 to, to, to 10. Uh, then I have a five-element cubical quad for six meters uh, and a quarter-wave GP for 40 with four elevated wow. radials. That's all on top of a condo building that can be seen <laughs> maybe two miles away in Barcelona. Wow. It's like a, we get away with murder there. We had some uh, <laughs> legislator hams in Spain that fixed things for us. Nice. <laughs> and the noise levels in downtown Barcelona? Uh, according to the Flex S7, according to the 990 S3, so somewhere okay, in Okay, so the man uses a Flex, all right. Uh, yeah. Fantastic setup, and uh, you're in every contest, aren't you? Uh, every contest I can. I travel a lot for yeah. shooting, and, uh, and I have two daughters, two small daughters, so, you know, weekends are kind of complicated, but if I can't run the full contest, I do stint six hours or ten hours, and, and I just run. I'm a runner. I like to run. I miss all the multis, but it's, I do it for the fun. I'm not really a, a super contester. I'm more of a DXer. That's my, my true passion, but Perfect. I contest. I love it. Okay. Also, I heard, I saw in the chat room that you might possibly have a YouTube channel as well. Can we follow that? Uh, not a YouTube channel, but I think my company, my production company has like a YouTube channel with my advertising work, but I have to check that. I don't even know where it is. I prefer <laughs> to see my work. <laughs> yeah. You like, do you direct like BMW commercials or like high yeah. end stuff like that? BMW for a long time. It's been a long time collaboration with them and Mitsubishi Motors too. Uh, I've done some AT&T stuff for the US, uh, some Telefonica, which is the big telco there in, in Spain. And I've been doing advertising since I was 21. I'm 50 now. So uh, I'm kind of fed up with it. So the plan is to slowly veer off advertising and go into fiction. So this project is kind of a transition. 
okay. you know, between my previous okay. life and the new one. Another question is, um, and this comes from one of our hosts here on Ham Nation. <laughs> do you have any kit building included in your documentary or do you want any filming for it? <laughs> I will, I will. Homebrewing is a, is okay. a pending thing, but it has to be there. Uh, I want the QRPP guys too, because they are mostly big guns, the ones I have. I'm you a hear QR that, people? Spanish Ola guy, so I, I want to show the other side, so... Okay, let uh, me ask you one other question, Alan, and this this one's important. Um, do do you want people to reach out to you currently because they have an interest story that you would like about amateur radio or you finding people on your own? Uh, at this stage, uh, I'm almost done uh, with okay. what I'm going to shoot, and uh, and I really need to finish this project for the sake of my mental health because I <laughs> no, <laughs> the best stations in the world and uh, operating from them, I could you know it could take 20 years for me to finish the movie, and I already have a feature script, a fiction script okay. that my okay, partner so might say is pushing I... for me. So everybody wants my family and my partners; they want to for <laughs> me to end up this craziness. So for not for now, not. But I might reach to you guys if I need definitely someone. Uh, most likely, I will be doing the rest of the shooting in Europe and maybe in South America uh, because I'm missing the Southern Hemisphere. I think it's important, you know, to see the other yeah, the other uh, side of ham radio. So well, it's uh, international, now, and that's the important part to embrace about it is that it's everywhere. It's universal, yeah. and. I, um, uh, I just wanted to say, so people watching, don't reach out to Alan and inundate him with, <laughs> you should come interview me. Don't do that. Okay, go ahead, Alan. No, I mean, And you've been working on this since, what, 2019 or something? Then COVID hit, right? No, 2000, 2016. I, 16. I started in February 2016 yeah. uh, with this mini the expedition uh, to Forex 429 Delta Sugar. Uh, we activated the Dead Sea. We put verticals on the water in the lowest point of Earth. Uh, and we made like 18 kilo QSOs. Before that, I, I was a CQ shy because my first <laughs> ham radio experience was when I was seven and I forgot that completely. Uh, so Amir kind of pushed me to the shark tank and, and then in Pitcairn, I was already pile up ready. I'm a phone guy and since Pitcairn, I started training on CW. And now I'm a CW nut. I'm doing much more CW than phone lately. And my family is grateful for that because I'm a shouter, you know, so. <laughs> well, and you got to watch Paint Dry do an FT8 on Pitcairn, right? <laughs> well, it's funny because I was challenged. They told me you have to be trilingual. And I said, look, I, FT8 is not my thing. I'm sorry. I just fall asleep. So I made this demo. We fired, I fired up four stations, two stations, and made single <laughs> operator four radios to show that I could. And Good. then... Uh, just and don't get me wrong, I like FT8. I'm on there a lot, but yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, whatever tickles whoever, I'm I'm super respectful for that. It's yeah. just not my personal cup of tea, but I think it has done a lot of love for ham radio, especially in these horrible years, condition years, you know? Right, and it fills in the DX gaps, and so, yeah, yeah. So, all right. But any more questions, Amanda? Phone, <laughs> I, I don't have any more. I could I could sit here and talk to you, Alan, for another hour. But um, no, I don't have any more questions. Um, chat Hands room, up, ladies. You. That one's mine. He's getting here Friday. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She's <laughs> going to whine and dine you, honey. <laughs> okay. By the way, CJ Johnson, uh, WT2P, uh, he's one of the characters. I shot him and uh, King Lead who is standing here, Dipoli, okay, 9PG. They are characters in the movie, too, so we have All a little... All right, and they are characters, so you got oh, some yeah. good ones there. <laughs> yep. I love CJ and Paul. PG, Dipolio. Dipolio! Dipolio! Come on, Dipolio! Do it! Oh. And All right, Paul. there he is. Paul's there. He's, he's oh. the host. He's been taking him around into Iowa and now in Peoria and... Paul, how did you not jump in right away? Usually you're uh, like the show stealer. He's shy. Anybody that, that is not that's, that's me, I'm shy. All right. We, no. we are going to have the first glimpse of Dipolio's lair, the oh. cave, Dipolio's cave. I, oh, there's a, there's a lot of new stuff to go out to. And he's not even wearing a Hawaiian shirt. I just, I don't even know. Is that really you, Paul? Yeah. Okay. I, I was in a hurry. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, darling. Nice to All see right. you, by the way. Okay, nice. thanks, yep. Alan, for being here tonight. We appreciate yes. it. Keep us updated. And I'm looking forward. I, I I hope it comes out that soon, March. I didn't even, I'm picturing a year from now because you probably, I know you got a lot of editing done during COVID, but now you're getting all this new film. Um, and I know how long that takes, but uh, that'd be great if it comes out this spring. So uh, everybody be on the lookout for that. And I'm sure once it comes out and you have a trailer and stuff, we'll get you back on, right? Of course. It will be uh, premiered in uh, Ham Nation, I promise. All right. <laughs> Trailer, Thank said- you for joining us, Alan. Thanks, Paul, for showing him around. Sergio, right? Was he Sergey? Yeah. Yeah, thank, thank Sergio. yeah th- and the cameraman. Got to be nice to that guy. All right. I'm going to send it over to Don. Very good stuff. Alan, listen, um, if you're looking for um, someone to talk about kits, you will do no better than the guy who's going to come up after me, and that will be uh, the kit building editor for CQ Magazine. That is the cat in the hat himself from Dayton, <laughs> Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB. He's coming up after we tell you about the news of the week and a little solar report as well from Dr. T. But first, this from Amateur Radio Newsline. From Amateur Radio Newsline report number 2,343, this is Ham Nation headlines for Wednesday, September 28, 2022. Our top story this week is Hurricane Fiona, which brought devastation to the islands of the Caribbean. Amateur radio operators were part of the team responding to the vast needs of the region. As Hurricane Fiona ravaged the region, amateur radio operators were hard at work in areas of the eastern Caribbean and western Atlantic. Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and the Turks and Caicos Islands suffered severe flooding, catastrophic wind damage, and major power outages as the storm, which grew to Category 4, made its way toward Bermuda. In addition to local communications support, the Hurricane Watch Net was activated, and the Salvation Army Team Emergency Radio Network was handling health and welfare traffic. William Planas Montes, NP3WP, Aries Section Emergency Coordinator for Puerto Rico, reported that around 45 ham radio operators were working with different government municipalities, and Aries personnel were setting up equipment in anticipation of additional activity. This is Randy Sly, W4XJ. Hams in the Western Caribbean and Florida are now bracing for Major Hurricane Ian. More as this developing story unfolds. Organizers have just announced that campers attending next year's Youth on the Air Camp in the Americas will be packing their bags for a northern location. The IARU Region 2 Youth on the Air Camp, which was held in Westchester, Ohio for its first two years, is moving north to Canada for its third year. The camp will be able to host as many as 30 young amateurs from North, Central, and South America on the campus of Carleton University in Ontario, Canada. Applications will be accepted starting December 1st, and any amateur radio operators in the Americas who are between the ages of 15 and 25 are welcome to apply. Prospective campers who do not live in Canada are being encouraged to apply for passports and tourist visas in time to enable them to enter the country to attend the camp. Youngsters who attended previous sessions of the Youth on the Air Camp will return to serve as leaders. Top priority for admission will go to first-time attendees and youngsters who reside outside the United States. The camp will take place from July 16th through to the 21st with Radio Amateurs of Canada serving as the local host. For additional details, visit the camp's website at youthontheair.org. I'm Jack Parker, W8ISH. For our final story, we take you to Long Island, New York, where inventor Nikola Tesla conducted many of his groundbreaking experiments. Tesla's former laboratory is the perfect inspirational spot for a ham radio club to celebrate an important anniversary. Marking its 75th anniversary on Long Island, the Suffolk County Radio Club, W2DQ, appreciates what it means to be a part of radio history. So it's celebrating the occasion at a nearby historic spot, Wardenclyffe, the former laboratory of electronics innovator Nikola Tesla, now renamed the Tesla Science Center. Though the noted engineer and inventor died in 1943, four years before the radio club was founded in Suffolk County, his spirit will be present on October 8th when the club activates special event station N2T from the historic tower between 1500 and 2359 UTC. Hams contacting the operators during the event will be able to receive a downloadable certificate. Meanwhile, even with Tesla himself long gone, his old laboratory is still functioning as an 
incubator for new things in the radio universe. The Tesla Science Center Amateur Radio Club, N2TSC, was formed this past July by a handful of hams. This is Jim Dameron, N8TMW. And that's all from the Amateur Radio News Line, your independent source for amateur radio news for four decades and counting at arnewsline.org. With Randy Slide, W4XJ, Jack Parker, W8ISH, Jim Dameron, N8TMW, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York, and our news team across the globe. I'm Don Wellbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation. Now, here's the solar update from Dr. Tamitha Scove. WX6SWW. Space weather this week continues to be a bit on the stormy side. As we take a look at our Earth-facing disk, we have a coronal hole that's been rotating in through the Earth's strike zone over the past couple days. It's been sending us some fast solar wind, and along with a stealthy solar storm, all of that managed to bump us up to G2 levels for a short bit back on the 27th. Now we're beginning to calm down from that fast solar wind, and we have yet another set of coronal holes. This set is the same set that gave us a G2 level storm back in early September and it looks like it's poised to do it again. We actually had a, a solar storm launch back on the 28th from region 3110 and this the solar storm looks like it's mainly going to the east of of Earth, but uh, NOAA models show that the solar storm might actually clip us. So right around the first, about midday on the first, we're expecting this uh, the solar storm to kind of clip us along with that fast solar wind. So once again, we may be up to G2 levels with storming. Not quite sure it's going to be that intense, but we definitely will find out shortly. Now also, as we take a look at the far-sided sun, this is stereo A and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see that big coronal hole sitting around mid-disc. Mid along with region 3110, and that should get you kind of anchored a little bit. But look to the east limb in stereo's view. You see a lot of brightening in the north. This is from old regions uh, 3094 and, and 3098. These are regions that were bit, were flare players back uh, about a month ago, and it looks like they've survived their, their far-sighted passage. So we definitely will be expecting the uh, solar flux to stay boosted, and we're going to expect that radio blackouts will still be on the menu. You. Now switching to our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity. You're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And as we watch the solar storms being launched, you can see that first one, the one in the front, that's the larger of the two. Even though it looks like it's coming up mainly to the east of Earth, as you watch it come out, you can tell we're going to actually get clipped by this solar storm right around the 1st, probably midday to mid-afternoon mid on the 1st. And this is actually going to happen right about when that fast solar wind from those coronal holes is going to uh, start hitting Earth as well. So. Aurora photographers, this is good news for you. It definitely means we could be getting some decent aurora show, possibly down into mid-latitudes. But amateur radio operators and emergency responders, this is not good news for you because we're dealing with Hurricane Ian. So all of you that are dealing with the hurricane watch nets, please understand that you're going to deal with radio blackouts potentially on Earth's day side, but then Right around October 1st, when this storm hits, you're going to be also dealing with radio propagation issues on Earth's night side as well. So please take these, uh, these matters into consideration when you're planning your communications for all that first responding you're doing, as well as realizing that GPS might have some issues during the solar storm. For more details on this week's space weather, including how that coming solar storm might affect communications during Hurricane Ian. Come check out my channel or see me at spacewitherwoman.com. Thank you, Dr. T. And I highly recommend that you follow her on Twitter. That She will give you up to the second almost uh, information as it comes into her. She spits it right back out on Twitter. That is the best way to keep in touch with her. And also, if you want a private messenger on Twitter, she's really responsive to that as well. And we certainly appreciate and thank her, WX6SWW. Now let's move over to the man who is probably responsible for as many soldering iron burns on fingers <laughs> as Gordon West is successfully completed amateur radio exams. Here's Joe Eisenberg, K0NEB. Well, thank you very much, Don. And excuse me there, we'll clean up the mic here. Um, Thank you very much for the uh, kind words, and uh, uh, I have a couple of things to show tonight, so let me put the screen up, and 
let me see if there it goes. How about that? And uh, we're going to kind of go back to something I showed uh, several uh, months ago, and that is there are a lot of surface mount kits coming out. And this particular one is very popular. It is a surface mount dummy load from the four state QRP group. Now it uses bigger surface mount parts. And there's two different ways to do it. One is with uh, tweezers and you can solder one end and then the other of the uh, uh, surface mount part. And that's kind of the way that uh, most people do it if they got one or two parts. But there's a way to do it if you've got a lot more parts and that is with solder paste. And what that is, is that's uh, flux mixed with solder. Now this particular uh, paste mixture is 6337, just like the kind of solder that I recommend the most. And what you do is you squirt it onto the circuit board and you can see kind of looks messy, doesn't it? You know, uh, the bottom ones were already soldered in place. And now these top ones, you put a dab on each one. Now you say, well, that's going to look, look terrible. Well, in reality, it doesn't because when you heat it up, it gets uh, warm enough to melt the flux and then the solder. And then it kind of flows out when you have those parts already on there. And guess what? It all comes together. In fact, they straighten up because the surface tension gets the parts to straighten up. Now, I've, I've showed this before, and I want you to see what it looks like with all the parts now on the board, but with the paste before it got heated up. But what's magic is after it gets heated up, guess what it looks like? Look at that. It's all nice and neat. Oh, wow. Because, because uh, the flux flows and the solder melts and it, it uh, coagulates on the pads and the surface tension straightens up the parts. So it looks really nice. And that's really how most of your consumer electronics are made. Uh, is a similar fashion, of course, more automated. But the tool I'd been using before was a kind of a clumsy tool that sells for about $20 at Hobby Lobby. And it's it's a plastic thing that heats up and, and it's used for embossing ink for scrapbooking. Well, yeah, it's 20 bucks at Hobby Lobby. Well, at the time that I started using that, uh, a heat tool that would you you would use for kit building or small quantities of surface mount parts uh, was very expensive. It was like two or three hundred dollars. So a twenty dollar tool made sense. But take a look at this. This is a tool that sells for thirty nine ninety nine. So it's forty bucks from Amazon. Okay, and guess what it is? It is both a surface mount heat tool and a temperature controlled soldering station all for 40 bucks digital temperature controlled automatic control um esd um uh qualified everything and you'll notice it comes with three different heat nozzles it comes with two different sets of esd insulated tweezers it comes with five different tips for the soldering iron. Uh, it comes with a sample of solder, a soldering iron holder, and a cleaning uh, sponge, and a roll of solder wick. And this particular device is called a rework station. But uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to uh, uh, paste a link in the chat room, and it's where you get this thing on Amazon. And, and it, it really, really uh, surprised me because for a beginning kit builder, I always told them, get a temperature controlled soldering station and you can get them for about $40, $50 now. Well, this for 40 bucks combines that with a tool that you can use not only for surface mount, but you can use that also for shrinking heat shrink, which we use quite often on connectors and, and wires and so forth. Now you'll notice if you look carefully on there, you'll see there are two sets of digital readouts. Uh, one of them is for the soldering iron, and the other is for the heat tool that's used for surface mount parts. So we're going to take a look there, and we're going to look at the two hand pieces there. 
and you have the soldering iron and the heat gun. Now, the heat gun there does not have the nozzle on the tip at that point. Uh, they plug into separate outlets on the base of the uh, tool. But, you know, when you're talking about 40 bucks and having the ability to desolder and solder surface mount parts as well as use a regular soldering iron and have it all temperature controlled for a beginning kit build you just uh, kit builder you, you just can't really beat this thing and this is what it looks like when it's all put together uh, the soldering iron sits on the cradle on the left and the heat tool sits on the one on the right and when you hang up the heat tool it automatically cools it down so uh, you're not blowing hot out of the uh, nozzle so you're not going to burn anything up and so forth and you can set the temperatures different now I set the uh, because it's on Celsius I set the soldering iron on about 300 Celsius and about 400 Celsius for the hot air tool so it does a quicker job. And because you can focus that heat with the nozzle on a smaller area of the circuit board, you're going to get a lot better job done and a lot more precise than using that $20 Hobby Lobby embossing tool to do this job. So once again, um, the uh, link has been put up by Josh in the chat. And uh, uh, it's very affordable. And I've had a lot of fun with this one. And uh, did a group kit build with it, and uh, am about to do uh, another couple of group kit builds with this, so that everybody gets to learn how to handle surface mount parts without having to necessarily solder them in the normal way, uh, but instead by using solder paste. And that is the way that most of our electronics are made. So, Josh. There's a nice low-cost tool, something to get people started on not only kit building, but surface mount parts as well. And you can use it to retrieve surface mount parts from surplus circuit boards, like old motherboards and things like that. Something that we hams have not done before, uh, at least affordably. And now for 40 bucks, you can't go wrong. Wow. That's killer. That's a killer price on that. And uh, that did you say there were tweezer attachments too? Uh, there were tweezers that come with it. Oh, so that you not can, hot tweezers. So, okay, no, got it, got it. No, okay. not hot tweezers, but you can use them to hold something in place when you're uh, putting the paste on the pads and things like that. And because it has a focus nozzle, you're not as likely to uh, blow the surface mount part uh, away from the pads. Yeah, that's so, Joe, there's like a little fan in there that blows the heat out of the small yes. nozzle? Yeah, yeah, out of the uh, heat tool that's on the right. Uh, wow. there's a, it, it does have a little blower, and that's controlled by the uh, temperature controller within the unit. It's great. Very, nice. Very good. Joe, you always got the coolest stuff. Whenever you, you post, uh, whenever you bring something here, I'm always like, well, got to buy one of those yeah. now. Uh, I already, uh, I already a have a good iron and a, and a hot. Flow, reflow station and now i'm thinking i'm going to buy one of those review it and then maybe give away a couple of them because at 40 bucks it's like I, that's a game changer yeah, yeah it that's, is. that's crazy good it yeah. is and and the neat thing about it is is that uh if we can get kit builders to not be quite so afraid of one or two surface mount parts uh it really goes a long way number one number two if you're trying to remove an ic a conventional IC from a circuit board, you can use this tool on the bottom of the board and take the tweezers and lift the socket or the IC from the top of the board. Yep. That way you can heat all the pins evenly and get it cleared out. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Terrific. Great find as always. Thank you, Joe. Well, anybody have any uh, final words? Do we need to hit anything up, Amanda? What um, a night, huh? I know. Yeah. It's been an amazing night. Um, let's see. Uh, I, yes, I am doing um, another event this week for Aries. It's a 5K, 10K, and a trail run, so wish me luck. That's going to be on Saturday morning. Anybody that follows me on Facebook, you're going to see lots of photos from me and maybe some video. We're supporting about, uh, I think, about 500 runners, so that's going to be a fun time. And, um, and I'm, then, then I'm kind of retiring from the Aries aspect and taking up the section manager aspect. So I'm saying goodbye to some of these events that I've been doing and running for the last 10 years, which is kind of sad, but it's just kind of necessary. It's like, I got to let these new people take it and run with it. And maybe they could even do better 
than me. And um, so I'm looking forward to that. So uh, weird time. Let's see what else. Uh, you come see Joe and me in Wyoming, right? Uh, we're going to yes. be there on October 8th. Um, uh, the se- Friday the 7th in the afternoon. I should be there. Yeah. So we have the brewery on Friday the 7th. <laughs> yes, I should <laughs> be there for that, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know. And then uh, we'll be at the um, forums on Saturday, and Joe's going to have a great forum, so I'm looking forward to watching that. And um, other than that, uh, just stay tuned for two weeks from now. Indeed. That's it. Nets? That's all I have. Nets? Oh, oh yes, Nets. So Kevin, KC7FPF, you know, he's in Florida, and he's in kind of the path of in so he canceled the net but tom ritter in wyoming wy7ky said i can pick it up and they they do work hand in hand so uh tom's going to be running it and i think he's around 7193 tonight okay and uh, steve i did not see him on chat but he's still currently on 20 so that's 14268 dmr 31012 and of course let's not forget d star on 14 charlie so Indeed. Have fun, everybody. Thank you for our net controls. Appreciate it. All right. Anybody have any round the rooms they want to mention? I want to say, first off, um, that the, for the folks down in Florida, we are keeping you in our prayers. And it's not just Florida. Don't don't get keyed on, okay, well, it hit, um, Amen. you know, it hit that one spot and then it's over with. It's not. It's going to affect, it's going to go all the way across the state. It's going to go back into the Atlantic and it's probably going to curve back up into the uh, South Carolina coast. So you're going to have effects in Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, uh, East Tennessee, on into the Virginias, perhaps Kentucky. And it's going to just, as it spins out, it's not just Florida. So it's it's a good chunk of the East Coast. And there's going to be a lot of flooding. And that's what kills most people. It's not the wind and hurricanes mm-hmm. and these types of tropical uh, weather events. It's flooding that kills. So uh, keep all those people... Uh, in mind and yeah there there's uh joe's brother's backyard uh, at wow. ground zero wow and, and uh, it's not just wow. that too it's the generator usage Make exactly sure that's another thing oh, great yeah. point right. valerie right in great the point. in the days and weeks after the event you're going to have power outages that will last days and weeks or in the case of katrina it was months for us um, a lot of people using generators is going to be a, a, a fire hazard obviously and also the invisible uh, and insidious hazard of carbon monoxide. So be very careful with generators. Uh, Be very careful around downed power lines. Just basically be very careful around everything that is around you. And And hazardous uh, water. I just that's another one. That's another one. Yeah, be open. uh, You know, electrical lines in there. So and And just bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You know, in in Katrina, we had um, we had a crude oil spill. Uh, Mm -hmm. from one of the refineries a little bit of that got in my yard so yeah there's a whole lot of things um snakes watch out for snakes and and you're in florida alligators Alligators. yes they have alligators how to watch out for (laughs) everything so all of you folks who are in the path of ian um we you're in our prayers so i would like to just say uh that that a lot that desantis and um fema have been working really really hard though i've been watching the news stories on them they have prepared so hard in advance for this that thirty-three thousand linemen now i think Mm -hmm. are are standing by maybe even at forty thousand from every state almost in the united states they're staging all all around that area they are they're they're ready to to pounce and there's they were just staging so much stuff they even have the the cajun navy is already there ready to go and uh anyone that knows what the cajun navy is capable of they will save lives over and over they'll save your dang dog and your cat and your parrot and so, fill you full of gumbo and jambalaya. That's right. Can, can I get a, a confirmation, too? The Hurricane Watch Net is active, and it's at uh, hwn.org. Uh, so you can go there for more information. But that's my understanding is the frequency is 7.268 megahertz. But is Correct. there is there any other uh, health and wellness frequencies that anyone needs to know about? That was a question that came in on the chat. Is that uh, the one? Saturn. 
uh, yeah. Salvation Army team uh, is um, about 20 kilohertz away, and I don't know if they're higher or lower, but it's real easy to hear their signals. So listen to the listen for Saturn, and you'll get a lot of health and welfare requests. Yeah. So 40 meters is primarily the band you want to be on. Uh, primary 40 okay. during the uh, night. Okay. There you go. And well, they also helps. have Echolink, but Echolink, uh, once these folks are um, out of power and out of internet, Echolink isn't going to do them any good. Right. But that it is there and they are listening in case you got out of the area and you still need to check on family that might still be in there. That might be their way of um, contacting to see if they've heard anything. Uh, uh, yep. Anything else, Gordo, we need to know about? Uh, nope, that's it. We have the Pacific okay. Air Show out here with the uh, Thunderbirds and uh, all the oh, uh, military crafts. So, oh, yeah, this weekend ahead. I'm seeing Talk Group, uh, Talk Group 3199 for DMR. I can't know, I can't confirm or deny that, but uh, that's okay. a comment we're seeing in the chat. So you may want to check that. And someone says All Star and Echo Link, but uh, that's going to depend totally on which ones you're keying in on. So I can't really comment on that. But yeah, everybody stay safe out there and. Uh, it, by the way, anybody that's watching me, you know how to get a hold of me on social media if you want to get some kind of piece of information out or let us know about what people should be listening to as far as frequencies or whatnot. Yeah. Feel free to yeah. reach out and let us know You know how we, I can use my platform here to get information out as possible. So, yeah, feel free to reach out. Thank you. And uh, I just what, – Valerie, I hate to – put a spotlight on you but valerie is an angel from heaven and uh, has helped in these hurricanes oh. in maria and i can't even remember the name of the one in harvey Houston. with harvey. the dogs yeah. yeah my son and i rescued dogs from drowning well because they put in that katrina law after katrina that uh d you know dhs has to help um take the families with their pets because a lot of people didn't leave because of the pets but when harvey struck the Cajun Navy came in and volunteered and they didn't have to because they weren't a government agency. So right. a lot of them didn't accept the pets. So we were at it again, you know, with everybody leaving their pets behind. So that's when my son and I went down there and rescued pets. But uh, and another, yeah. another good point is remember this, this um, Ian hit the Caribbean long before it hit Florida yes. and the entire Island of Puerto Rico was without power. The entire and Cuba. Island and, and Cuba, Cuba yeah, too. And, yeah, I don't know about the entire island of Cuba, but a great... It was, the entire good, island of the Cuba. Took wow, down the whole I industry. hadn't heard that, but I know wow. the entire island of Puerto Rico. So, yeah, uh, all those folks down there um, need your help. Yeah. And if you can help, by all means, uh, 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 donate to Red Cross and some of those other um, worthy uh, places yeah. to do that. And if you can pass traffic, pass traffic. And um, just if you can help in any way, help I'm in yeah. some way. I'm going to mention one other very important thing in Florida. Um, they have very strict requirements on volunteering. So if you have not heard this, you need to go to Florida volunteers, I think, dot org. And you have to sign up to go there to volunteer. Right. No matter who you are. Never go on your own. Never, never show ever. up dry. Self-deploy. Yeah. No, never. You always sign. Everything is um, recorded and for documentation now. So be right. sure they're going to accept you. It's fine, but just make sure you fill out the form so that you can be accepted to go right. volunteer in case. I think the, right the Amish are the only ones that get away with that. They just show <laughs> up with chainsaws. I know. So, I mean, so many people I know that have been in disaster. They just show up. You know, they're they're great. Yeah. They're fine. They're, they're by yeah. and large a trustworthy group. <laughs> yeah. Hey, and uh, you guys out there, don't forget to like the vi like this. You know, if you like this, hit the like button so this gets out yeah. there. So yeah, absolutely. We get this out to more hams. There you go. All right. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you for the kind words, everybody in the chat and watching the show with all your comments. We absolutely loved it. And uh, we'll say seventy three to everybody. See ya. Good night. God bless. Stay safe. Yes, indeed. Josh, you're amazing. <laughs> I know. Cheated death again. <laughs> One more time. See you in two weeks. <laughs>